popping. Raj coming at y'all. I got a story for you. This is not a fragrance video. If you read the title, you'll see there's no fragrances. So please, please, please understand this is a live video. I don't do pre recorded videos. I like to do live because I have nothing to hide. But please know it doesn't say anything about a fragrance on this video. So please, please do not send me any comments about fragrances, please, as I talk about this story. The title says Roger, Iran, the U.S. Navy, USS Constellation, and more. That's all I'm talking about. There's no need to even comment about it. I'm just here to tell you a story, and I'm going to tell it to you live. In 1979, I graduated from a school in Philly called Franklin Learning Center. After three years of enjoying myself in Franklin Learning Center as a teenager, after going to one of the best, most prestigious schools in Philadelphia called Central High School, I decided that I didn't want to be an academic. I didn't want to go to college. I didn't care about being a doctor or a lawyer. My father did. My mom, ah, let my son do what he want, as long as he ain't acting a fool. My mom, my angel who looks over me right now, didn't mind. Do what you got to do, but whatever your dad says, I'd rather you do what your dad says. Dad said, you're going to go to Central High. You're smart. Best school in the city at the time in 1974. I want you to go there. I could have went to other academies. I could have went to charter schools. He wanted me to go to Central High School. So, again, being in Central High, two things happened. One, there were no women or girls in, in Central High. They had two different schools. They were both academic schools. And people who live in Philly you know about these schools. Central High School was a school that the smart dudes went to. Girls High was a school that smart girls went to. After school, you would get out. Central would get out at 2.15. Girls High would get out at 2.30. That's when you got to interact with the young ladies. Me being a guy who was a studious guy, I was just in the books. Now, I played sports and all that stuff. I tried to play hockey for, for the first year I was there. You know, I, wouldn't, I really, I didn't even stay a year. And, you know, but I wanted to be around girls. You know what I mean? Even though I would think I was all that cute, I would be around girls. But it didn't work out that way. I didn't want to be academic anymore. I got tired of going to English class in the morning. I had to go to history class. All these things I just wasn't interested in. And I just started playing music. I started getting involved in bands at the age of 14. So since I was interested in bands at the age of 14... I just wanted to be a musician. My dad wanted me to be a doctor, a lawyer. I wanted to be a musician. Go to that school so you can be a doctor, a lawyer. No, I want to be a musician. What happens? I didn't go to school. I hooky just about every day. I doctored my report card to make it like I was going to school. Doctor days, apps, and all that stuff. He got mad with my butt a couple times. Didn't quite work. I was getting bigger. I, you know what I mean? He just gave up on me and said, heck with you. I still respect my father, no doubt about it, even though he's not here anymore. So, going through Central, I ended up transferring to a school called Franklin Learning Center where I started getting into performing arts. I did music. I did all that stuff. I had a ball. I became a little, little superstar there, whatever, whatever. You can look me up on the Franklin Learning Center site. They actually barred me off the site because I was putting on my accomplishments that I'm going through now. And a lot of people aren't as accomplished as I am now who went to that school. So, all of a sudden, they took me off for some reason. I know that's why. Well, my man Mel Williams, who's there for me, he's still doing great. He's a, 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 um, he does movies and everything and drama things up in New York. Me and him stay in touch because we know what the real is. Anyway, now let's move on. I graduated from Franklin Learning Center in 1979. At that particular point, I was happy, finally out of school. I can play music full time. I joined these bands and I was chilling. Then there was one specific night that changed my life. I decided to go out with a couple of friends of mine, Mr. Wills, Mr. Stratton, um, I think Mr. Uh, Durant was there, and my name, my man, rest in peace, may the Lord, uh, Lord have mercy on your soul, uh, Rock. And they came and picked me up one night, and they was like, yo, let's hang out. Now, I'm 18 now. I was 18 in July. This is somewhere around maybe August. Cool. Hang out. We acting a fool. We drinking 40s. Blah, blah, blah. Doing our thing. Blah, blah, blah. Having fun, right? Cool. We all graduated from high school. We all out. We enjoying ourselves. Kirk Rock was older than us, so he was already out. You know, bada bing, bada boom. But we was enjoying ourselves. So I go 
and I had a key to the house. Now, it was roughly around maybe 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. And I walk up to the house, to my parents' house, of course, not my house, to my parents' house. I walk up to the house. I open the door. Now, I'm, I'm kind of buzzed a little bit. I open the door, screen door, man wouldn't do open the door. And before I can get the door good, my dad comes down the steps. Boom, 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 boom. Who do you think you are? My dad had a little mouth, but y'all know I don't use profanity, and there's no need going through that. He's a country guy. Country guys use profanity. He's from Mahoskey, North Carolina. That's what he did. He got down a little bit all my life. He cussed and fussed. It is what it is. I still turned out to be a pretty decent dude. You know what I mean? And he was a very decent father. But like everybody's parents, they ain't all perfect. Like, you know, and I ain't talking about perfect in the sense of being perfect. I'm just saying, you may not get along with your mothers and fathers sometimes, but you still got to honor them and you love them because that's in the Word, that's in the Bible, that's through our Heavenly Father's head, love your parents no matter what. There's a lot of y'all who hate your parents and don't like your parents, and it's a shame. But get over it. You'll be all right, whether you're young or old. You'll get over it. Because one day you might need them, even though they're older than you're behind, even if you're 50 or 60. So, now... He says, you're going to come in this house anytime you want just because you graduated from high school. You're going to come in anytime you want in my house. I'll tell you that right now. So y'all know me being a rebel that I am to this day. To this day. To this day. In my, yeah, in my voice of my man Dante Wilder. Levante, whatever his name is. To this day. I'm still a rebel. I was a rebel back then. I was supposed to go to a high school, become a doctor or a lawyer. Because I was smart like that, I'm intelligent like that, I decided to rebel against that and start playing music. My dad said, you ain't coming to this house any whole time you want just because you graduated. I rebelled. Okay? And that's what I did. Speaking of you, I'm going to put a post up for you uh, about something that I have here. I'm going to do this real quick since Khadija jumped in. I'm going to do this. Here's my Khadija hats. We're just going to take a moment of levity. And here's all my hats that Khadija Ramadan made for me. As you can see, the R is not for Ramadan, it's for Roger. Okay, that's enough for you, Ramadan. Back to work. You go back to work, I'm getting back to this video. Now, y'all see, I support. I support everybody. People don't support me. They, don't, they ain't buy a CD, they ain't download nothing. But I support people all the time. You know why? Because I'm cool like that. Now, I decided... When I went to bed that night, I'm like, yo, I've been in this house a long freaking time. I done been through a lot of stuff, you know, mentally, physically, whatever, man. It's all good. I done seen it all. I done done it all. You know what? If it's time for me to have to leave out this joint at the age of 18 in October, no, July, it was still summertime, July, August. If it's time for me to bounce out of here, then it's just time for me to bounce out of here. Your boy going to be a rebel. I love my mother. I didn't want to think about leaving moms, but I did. I did. My sister was still there, though, so I was cool. So, this is how it goes. I went to a Navy recruiter. I was moving around. I said, well, maybe I'd go in, in the Air Force, Army. I know I didn't want to carry guns, so Army and Navy was out. I was not doing Army and Navy. Didn't want to carry guns. I'm too smart. I don't need to carry guns. Give me something that I can use my brain. You know what I mean? Maybe I get down to submarine, become an AV or AX, you know, a, a AX, which is electronics specialist, or AE, electronic, you know, electrician's made or something like that. Or going to the Air Force. So I went to the Air Force. I'm like, well, what can I do in the Air Force? And it's like, ah, blah, 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 blah. You get to do this, get to do that. I said, well, you know, what else I get to do? I don't know. Okay, fine. I'll be back. I went to the Navy. Yo, I'm here. By the way, I went to the Air Force. That's okay. What did I get to do in the Navy? Hey, you get to travel, you get to travel around the world, you know, and that's what Navy do, and you don't just stay in one place, which is what the Air Force did. They might stay here in the States, they might go to another country and then stay there, whatever. But they didn't travel. They didn't get a chance to go around the planet. The Navy did. He was like, yo, you get to travel, bada bing, bada boom. I'm like, see you tomorrow. So, signed up, got the blood work done it. Got everything going with it, popping off on a pop off. I'm signing to join. I'm looking into it. I'm like, all right, cool. Bam, I'm going in the Navy. So I went home that day and I was like, 
I'm going to show him I ain't got to come in your house at 1, 2, 3 o'clock. I'm outy, dog. I'm outy. That's the rebellious part of me that still is here to this day. Y'all know I'm still rebellious. I'm always going to be rebellious because I'm always going to speak my mind no matter whether you think I'm right or wrong. That's what I do because I'm a man about my man. My daddy told me I'd be a man about my man. And Heavenly Father said you a king. And since I'm a king, I can say what I want to say as long as I don't disrespect you, call you out your name, use profanity, as long as I'm coming to you logically, inspirationally, and motivationally, then you know good and well you can't got nothing to say about me wrong whether you disagree with me or not. Bam. So now I go in, showed it to my parents. I'm going in the Navy. Huh? <laughs> Yes, I'm going in the Navy. My mom was like, why are you going in the Navy? I said, because, Mom, I just won't go in the Navy. Really, it was because I didn't want nobody, including my daddy at the age of 18, telling me when I'm going to come in out of his, of his house. <laughs> his house. Yeah, fool. Now, I don't have any children, so I never got a chance to experience telling a son, yo, don't come in his house after 1 o'clock. If you want to live here. I haven't had the time to have that experience. What's going on, brother? Haven't had the time to have that experience to tell a child that. I don't have any children. I'm almost 60 years old. Thank heaven. And if I get more years, thank you, Father. That I'm not going to have any kids at the age of 58, 59, 60, 61. I'm not going to get caught up in that trap. Even though I know some people have had a couple condoms break on them at the age of 50-ish. Ooh. You're going to have a grandchild. Not happening. We ain't having no kids. So I didn't get a chance to threaten my child with, you're going to come in, you know what time you want, you da 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 I ain't adopting nothing. Anyway, I'm adopting these juices, though. That's what I'm adopting. Back to the story. I'm trying to tell a story here. I don't want to make it too long, because when I post this on Facebook, Instagram, you know, our people's minds only last like three, four seconds, and then they off to the next, because they can't concentrate on a story for more than 30 seconds. That's why everything is so short. I'm telling a long story. I'm trying to make it short, but you're interjecting. I'm, I'm going to acknowledge you, but I've got to tell this story. Y'all saw the title. Stick with the title. All right. So, got my Navy papers. They say, yo, you are going to be in the Navy in Great Lakes, Illinois, September 26th. 1979. So I went from getting out of high school in July or June, whatever it was, and now I'm going to go in the Navy. Now, I got balls. I ain't scared. You ain't got to draft me. I'm going. I had no idea what I was getting into. All I know is that you're going to travel the world, blah, 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 blah. So I put my ball sack on. I strapped them joints up, and I went on ahead. What's up, cuz? Go army, baby. And I strapped my ball sack up, and I said, let's go. They say you're going to leave Philadelphia Airport, you're going to fly out to Chicago, you're going to get out there, and you're going to do what we tell you for the rest of your career. I signed up for three active years, two inactive reserves, and one inactive reserve. That's what I did. Cool. All right. So now I'm bada bing, bada boom, you're three months old. There you go. That's how young I am. So I get on the plane. I'm chilling. Yo, let's stick. Let me tell the story. Please, let me tell the story. Please, let me tell the story. Okay? I want to get into something. I got to address a whole big paragraph. Please, just let me tell the story. You can comment later down below when the story is done. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. You're my peeps. So I get on a plane. I think I left like maybe, maybe like 7 o'clock that night, 7, 8 o'clock that night. And it was like September, so it started getting kind of, it wasn't getting dark early, but it wasn't as light it would be. But when we landed, I landed, and it was like, almost like nighttime. So it was like, you see people getting out of prison, they get out them prison buses, that's the same thing they sent to the airport. They're like prison buses, big prison school buses. So you jump on the bus, they call out your name, you jump on the bus, you get on the bus that's going to take you to Great Lakes in Illinois for now, your first night in the U.S. Navy, get off the bus, get over there, stand in line, shut up, what's your name, we cutting your hair, sit down somewhere, we're going to poke you in the butt with some penicillin to make sure you ain't contaminated before we start letting you get around our people, what, it is what it is, the thing I had to take that penicillin shot in the butt and get that knot because my mama may be 
was allergic to penicillin, so I claimed it. So I just got a, a swab in my mouth, a moxicillin or something like that. I ain't had to take that shot in the butt. A lot of you cats know if you got into the military, you had to take that penicillin shot in the butt to make sure you got rid of anything that you had. If you bought some old VD and all that stuff with you, coal, whatever, you're trying to get rid of that so you ain't infecting our U.S. Navy. So, get off the drone, you're in the line, you go through the line, just like in prison. You get your garb, you get your boots, you get your stuff, you get your hat, you get your toothpaste, you get your bar, and they get over there. And you get over there. So you get over there, you stand in line, there you got to figure out where your barracks is going to be while you're going through now boot camp. So your first night, you're sleeping, but you're not really sleeping. You don't know what's going on. What the heck is freaking going on? What have I done? Am I in prison? Can I leave? Can I just decide I don't want to stay here anymore? Or am I here? If that contract that I signed, can I just get out of it? What? 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 Nope. You hear like you're in a prison, United States Navy, you signed it, you swore to it, you put your hand up, bada bing, bada boom. Fine. Wake up the next morning, boom, six o'clock, get up, put your clothes on, make your bed up, take your shoes on, dust and mop, sit at the, shine your shoes, shine his shoes, wash your butt, get out there in that line, I'll see you in five minutes. All that in five minutes? <laughs> what? But hey, that's where it is. And to this day, I keep my bed made up every morning. As soon as I wake up, I make my bed. Read the title, Shade Black. Let's stick to the title. I'm, title, I'm glad you're here. Enjoy the show. So, now, I'm in the Navy. Everything cool. I'm learning how to be disciplined. Because I'll tell you, if you've never been disciplined, a lot of you wake up, don't make up your bed. Your butt stank. You probably don't take a shower. You don't brush your teeth. You're trying to rush out the house. I will never go out of my house. I don't care if I'm running late. I'm going to make my bed up. My room going to be straight. So when I come back home, my domain is always intact. I don't have this laying over here, that laying over there. Before I leave out my place every day, my place is intact. I learned that from being in the Navy. All right? That's what I learned from. And if you was the Army, any place else, if you kept them to them habits, you're probably doing the same thing. It's a good habit to have. It's a good lifestyle to have. To make sure you keep your behind clean because cleanliness is next to the heavenly fatherless, father, fa godliness. You got to button up. So now I'm going to boot camp, but I'm having fun meeting people from New York, all over the place. Man, had a ball, man. Really enjoyed boot camp. I'm telling you, it was like I think we started boot camp September 26, and we got done somewhere in December something. I'm gonna show you my boot camp book. Hold on. I just see my bed made up. I keep my boot camp book because I never want to forget that I was in boot camp and that I served my United States Navy, honorably discharged. And here, it's called the Keel, and this is Recruit Training Command Book, Great Lakes, Illinois. Now the light is probably shining on it, so it's probably kind of jacked up. But this is where I came from, Great Lakes, New York, and I kept my book. Cause I had a great experience. I learned a lot. I got to meet a lot of people. And sometimes I still try to search some people out. You know what I mean? And heaven willing, they're still around. But it was a beautiful time. And here's the pictures. Barracks life. And there's our commanders. And blah, blah, blah. We got pictures in there. And all your pictures and stuff. And the squad. And us in, in our barracks. And making up barracks stuff. And doing stuff and petty offices and all that stuff and all that stuff and this is when I realized that I'm going to be a leader now I was not a leader specifically I was never a petty officer um, in boot camp I didn't get a chance to rise up the petty officer or anything like that but you know, I was cool I was enjoying myself I was having fun then one day a guy from uh, from Philly his name was Sam Peel we had we had a marching squad. You had you had every 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 um squadron or not squadron, but every boot camp, yeah you know I mean, had a marching joint. And this is what it looked like. Let me show you. Let me show you. But that part won't come out. This is the book. Now this is your marching joint. Can you see it? See all them flags and stuff right there? That's your flag down here in the bottom. There's your flags, marching joint, bada bing, bada boom. Everybody had 
a platoon and you had to carry flags and all this stuff and you had to march. So, pretty much, I was chilling. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed marching and all this stuff, man. It was pretty cool. I'm trying to find something else, but I can't find it. All right, nevertheless, we'll leave that there. We really had a good time. So one day, this guy named Sam Pill, he was what they called a guide on barrier. And the guide on barrier was the guy who carried the lead flag, and he was in the front. Well, no, he wasn't in the front. He was behind the petty officer, but he was in front. And he was the one that carried the main flag that talked about your platoon and all the other flags that you won throughout the time you was there. And if you look at this, we won a lot of freaking flags. We had just about all the flags. We won in athletic competition, keeping our barracks clean, you named it. We had just about all the flags. And we didn't have all the flags. And see that dude right down there? See that guy right down there with the flag down? See that guy leading the flags? Do you see that guy right there who's leading the flags? You see that flag down right there? 230, what it say? I forgot our squad. 259. It says 259 on the flag. Do you see the lead guy who's carrying that flag? Do you know who that lead guy was who carried the flag? Who made sure that we was in line? Who made sure he drilled them and made sure they marched right? And was able to look to the right while they were still marching and being in line? Do you know who that guy right there is? Oh, you know who it is. I'm a natural born leader. That's what I do. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. The guy named Sam started messing around. He wasn't paying attention. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't marching the guys. He wasn't doing what he's supposed to do to make sure the guys was ready for the joint. He was like, who want to get up there? Who want to take his place? I was like, I do. And I became the leader of the platoon. Made sure everybody marched right. Made sure everybody know how to look while we marching. Make sure you're still in the step. Bam. Bam. Bang! Had him on point, yo. Do you want to see the score that we got from your boy? Do you want to see the score? I know you want to see it because I ain't bragging. I'm just showing you what I did. There you go. Do you see what it says? It says, excellent drill. Excellent drill. Excellent drill. Excellent. The probability of points you could get was 4,000 points. 4,000 was the most points you can get in this drill. You want to see how many points we got? Because of your boy, the leader, that's what I do. I ain't just a fragrance dude. I ain't just a music dude. I be leading 3,955 points. Only 45 points away from 4,000. It came a time, it was time to leave boot camp, and now it's time to figure out where you'll get ready to go. So at this particular point, you got to find out where you get ready to go and what you want to do. Do you want to do electronics? Do you want to do this? What you want to do? I want to do electronics. I want to do aviation electricians, mate. So I, I, I said, I'm going to be an AE. They said, well, to be an AE, you got to go here. So my next destination was back home. Take care of your business, because now you get ready to make the big trip. I got stationed in Lemoore, California. People don't know where Lemoore, California is. If you know where Fresno, California is, it's probably about 20 miles from Fresno, 10 miles from Visalia, 10 miles from Oxnard. It's down there in the area. It's in the middle. It's above, of course, L.A. and all in San Diego, but it's below San Fran. I was stationed in Lemoore, California, in the name of my attack squadron, because I was in a attack squadron, that worked on A7E jet airplanes was the VA-146 Blue Diamonds. Shout out to my Blue Diamonds who are still out there, still around. VA-146 Blue Diamonds. And um, that's why I was stationed. So I wanted to be an aviation electrician. Man, I wanted to learn how to work on planes and learn how to work on jets. So we only had that one particular jet. We didn't have F-14s, F-16s, AEs, A6Es, ACEBs. We didn't work on those. I just worked on A7Es. So that was cool. Got to work on planes and stuff. But before you got to work on planes, you still had to go through a few things. You know what I mean? But you got to work on planes. 
Alright. Make sure I got some time, man, because I might have to cut this short because my phone on oh, no, the phone looking pretty decent. Okay. So what had happened was we was there, we was comfortable. We knew we had to go out on what we call cruises. Now, usually you get maybe a cruise every year and a half. Every year and a half, you got to go on a cruise. But before you go on a cruise, you got to go out on an aircraft carrier because we were aircraft. Now, if you look up, if you looked at Top Gun, that's where I was at. So anybody's familiar with Top Gun, Top Gun was airplanes that was on a big aircraft carrier that floated around the water in a particular section of the planet or Earth and that's where you got to be for six long months. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. Six long months on the water. Now, the beautiful thing about this is you hear from the veterans who have been there 10, 20, 30 years. You're going to love it. you have a great time. Man, you're going to love it. But you still got to take care of these planes. Okay, that's fine. I don't care. I want to travel. So I was on what you call a Westpac. Because we was on the West Coast. East Coast had East Packs. Then you had Mediterranean Packs that came out of Florida. You had different packs. You had packs that did the Mexico, down there, down there. That was a pack. You had the ones who did up Atlantic. That's Atlantic Pack. We was on a West Pack. That means my stop was anything west of L.A. So the first place you hit was Hawaii. The second place you hit is the Philippines. You got to hit those two places. You hit Hawaii to, you hit Hawaii to get some gas. Get some, get some stuff. Take you about seven days to get there. And then your next joint is the Philippines. That's where you load up again. And you get to do some nasty stuff with some women that you never met in your life. Drink San Miguel beer. Play around with pesos. And act a fool at the age of 18 and up. I'm not going to tell you about the stories that I've experienced in the Philippines. Along with Bow Bay. Subic Bay. If you've been there, stand up, baby. 1979, 81, 1979, 80, 81, 82. Stand up. Subic Bay along with Post City. That's where we got it in. We did a lot of nasty stuff. We did a lot of hooting and in. Did a lot of getting drunk, but we got the job done. So once you got done in the Philippines, you really didn't know what you were going to go because they didn't tell you like, okay, your next stop is here, your next stop is there, your next stop is there. But you don't expect to go on this cruise until about maybe a year after you get in. Nope. Got to San Diego in December of 1979. Next thing you know, they was like, we got to go now. We got to go where now? We got to go now. We get ready to bounce. Like, I just got here. What do you mean we got to go? You got to go. You got to go. You're getting ready to go. Where are we going? You're going on a cruise. A cru I just got here. I thought you didn't get a cruise for like a year. You're going right now. This is bananas. I just got getting used to where I was at, enjoying where I was at. I got to get ready to go on a cruise for six months. Just got here. Well, the problem is, the reason we're going on a cruise right now is because the Iranians kidnapped some hostages. Therefore, we must be a presence in the Indian Ocean to assist in any way the release of those hostages. I'm going to say it again for all you people who are totally ignorant to politics who are totally ignorant to anything about the military, who are just totally ignorant and like to just blab, blab, blab your mouth about things you don't know, and you're talking to a dude who was there. You're going to get on this cruise because we got to go and become a presence in the Indian Ocean because the Iranians has kidnapped some hostages, the Ayatollah Khomeini, and we got to be in the water to be there. Iranian. But I'll continue the story and then I'm going to end it. Because I don't even need to say anymore. I sacrificed my life in the Indian Ocean. I sacrificed my time. I sacrificed me being scared. Very scared. 
I wasn't a praying dude. I wasn't in the church. I ain't know what to think. All I know is every day I got airplanes. I got jets on the aircraft just like you saw in Top Gun blowing exhaust at you. You better be holding on to something. You get blown overboard. We had people who got killed or who jumped off the side of the doggone boat for whatever reason who were never found again in the Indian Ocean. When we got to the Indian Ocean sometime in maybe January or February of 1980, we were in the Indian Ocean for a record at the time, for a record 110 days straight. Do you hear me? I'm an 18 year old dude that just got out of freaking high school, decided he was going to rebel against his father, joined boot camp, thought he was going to enjoy the world, fly around, chill, do his thing. And now I'm in the middle of the Indian Ocean for 110 straight days trying to figure out what they're going to do about these hostages. I want any of you, any of you, people out there talking a whole bunch of jack about nothing because you know about nothing. And that's the only people I'm aiming to say. Anybody else, you're fine with me. I'm talking about all the people who have no idea what they're talking about politically, militarily, anything. Because you weren't there. I was there along with the other 4,000 people on that freaking boat and the other support boats that we had with us that made sure we had our food, everything we needed to exist in the middle of the Indian Ocean for 110 days straight. There were times out there you didn't even see the moon. You didn't even see the freaking moon. It was just totally black. And you had aircraft taking off the freaking air deck in pitch blackness because we were practicing for war. We were practicing for war. We were ready. If we had to lay something and bomb some knucklehead like they just did with a drone, if we had to bomb the Ayatollah, we were ready to drop a bomb on Ayatollah. In fact, my boy who were the, the guys who had the armament, my man, his name was Reese. He used to, they had to lift up the armament, they had to lift up the bombs and the flurs. The flurs is how the planes at that time, we talking about 1980, looked down to be able to see what was going on. That was well before drones and all that stuff was out. And you load it up. And a lot of guys, you would go and help them load up. And you would help them load that armament onto the wing of the aircraft. And people would write F the Ayatollah, F Iran. Because people were mad that we had to be out there for 110 days. Let them people go, man. But we was out there for 110 days straight. Some of you can't even land, you can't even go and you can't you can't even go on vacation for seven days on a cruise. The boat rocking too much. 110 days in the Indian Ocean. You got sharks around you. You got all kinds of stuff around you. If you drop off that boat, you are nothing but shark feed. That's what you are. And no matter how many Alert 5 helicopters they can try to launch to find you behind before a shark grind you up in the mincemeat. And you're going to tell me? You're going to bug on a dude, taking out a dude who was killing dudes who still was going to try to kill some more people. I had to be out there 110 days for them kidnapping people. And you talking this bull crap? Have you lost your freaking mind? You're a bunch of little kids, a bunch of little wussies who ain't never did nothing, never been to the military, still probably sucking your mama nipple, still probably in the house living in the freaking basement, being on, on Twitter and whatever trolling about some crap you don't even know about because you even been there. I've been there. And that's what made me make this video because I'm tired of the foolishness. I'm tired of it. Whether you like Trump or whether you don't like Trump. If you ain't put your balls on and you wasn't out in the ocean for 110 days, sacrificing your life, knowing that somebody could have shot a missile with that boat and killed all of us on that aircraft carrier, exposing our life every day for 110 days, and you want to tell me about some dude killing some dude in Iran who been killing people, not kidnapping people, killing people already? And you got this MSNBC and CNN and y'all watching that crap 
talking about this guy was a revolutionary and he was great for his country and all this stuff. Have you lost your freaking mind? So for me to you and all those who are ignorant to the fact of military involvement, because like I say, you're probably still 50-year-old suckle babies, 60-year-old, 40-year-old, 30-year-old, still living in your mama basement, trying to figure out what you're going to do today to day and whether you're going to get reparations from Trump. Trump can't bomb somebody because Trump can't die. Well, it wasn't Trump when I was there. It was Reagan. Ronald Reagan, a Republican. They had me out in the Indian Ocean for 110 days. Ronald Reagan, the same guy that when I got out the Navy, I couldn't get a job at the air doing working on aircraft because he fired everybody at the airport. Did I beef over that? No, I got a job someplace else. So let me tell you something. And this is the last time I'm going to make a story like this because I shouldn't have to make a story like this. I'm tired of these Trump haters. I'm tired of everybody haters who are so screwed up in the mind from eating this bad food, letting this dog on fried food. You're in Wendy's line at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning buying food from Wendy's, accepting a DNA from a dead animal you never saw in your life, and you want to sit there and talk about you hate Trump. You don't know what you hate. Because you eat so much bad food, you're drinking bad water, you do, you can't even take care of yourself, but you want to talk about something about Trump. You ain't know how to live your life right. And we ain't talking about righteously. You don't know how to eat right to sustain your life. And you worried about a freaking president killing somebody in Iran who all killed people already? And I had to be out there at 18 years old for 110 days in the middle of the Indian Ocean, not knowing if I was going to make it back or not? I'll tell you one thing. And it's going to be the last thing I'm going to tell you when it comes to do this Trump stuff, whether I post something on Facebook, Instagram, wherever. You can say what you want, but I'm going to say what I want. And whether I support Trump or whether I don't, it's none of your business. I can say what I want. If you ever have something to say of context or content or anything intelligence to say besides I hate Trump, then come see me. Until that day, get up out my face.